Uh, so we finally made it to season six, which was set in 2014, I believe. And we're here seeking an investment of $200,000 in exchange for 10% of our company. This is our son, Maverick. <laughs> He's all snug in a swaddle. I hope they named him for more reason than convincing Mark Cuban. Because he did not seem... <laughs> <laughs> Was that worth it? <laughs> the fabulous Zippity Zip was born. That's like what it's a squirrel, called? And he started. This is a baby straight jacket named Zippity Zip? <laughs> That's actually kind of gangster. So we've sold uh, a little over a million dollars worth. Wow. Nice. We invested $700 into this business. Total. Total. That's it. Well, that's actually really impressive. Usually these people have dumped so much of their own funds into this and it's like they're trying to get out of that. To up front, 700 bucks. You don't see that very often in the Shark Tank where they've put up so little of their own money and got success. That means there's almost certainly some kind of product market fit here. We did $200 in five minutes, shut it off. And my, wow. my wife said, oh, my wow. wife said, what am I gonna do? And I said, wow. you're gonna learn how to sew. <laughs> <laughs> They're all laughing. His wife's been in the fucking basement sweatshop working for fucking eight months. You're gonna learn how to sew, honey. The baby sleeps soundly and they have a siren to keep her awake. <laughs> and so when they are out of the womb, all of a sudden there's this freedom and they have something called a moral reflex. Imagine if you got them with like more of these nuts on your chin. <laughs> the whole thing was fake, dude. The entire baby straight jacket was fake just to get to that moment. <laughs> Do you want to go into retail? Is that one of the things you'd like to do? Or do you want to keep this as a community online? A lot of the questions that you guys ask, we need to have definitive answers. I don't know the answer to that. It is a weird thing to say, to say that I know that you need definitive answers and I don't have it. The way you can phrase it is like, yeah, we're not against retail, but we have to see the numbers. I'd do your deal, um, 200,000 for 20%, straight deal. I do not want to see you die in retail. There's no royalty. There's no royalty. That is funny because he's net. That's that's so rare from him. Yeah, no royalty, no percentage, no cut, no debt deal. By the way, I agree. Listen, I, 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 these guys are gonna know more than me about the the benefits or or dangers of retail. But if you look at how time has gone, an online only brand with like a specific niche, and you use like social media to market, and you like basically just build authenticity that way, was a little bit newer but it has proven to be extremely lucrative. Like it's a great way to build a business. So like what they're doing is really smart and kind of ahead of the game for 2014. So I'm gonna match Kevin's offer. Wow. <laughs> and we have yet to hear from Mark. Yeah, and you guys don't need me. I mean, look, you guys are the American dream come true. Thank you. Thank so you. Well, while I'm out, I can't. Guy on the right really fucking wanted to work with Mark Cuban. <laughs> This guy really wanted to work with Mark Cuban and he probably had a big say in the naming of the kid. And he's clearly a little bummed. <laughs> Mark, you remember that we named our baby Maverick though? Does that sway you at all? We would do the 15% for 200,000 and we would do it today. Why did you do that? I have to stick in my number and I'm sorry. I normally would be 33%. Do you want to partner another shark in this process? Absolutely not. <laughs> You got a deal, buddy. Bang. Whoa! <laughs> hey! David kind of just, he kind of popped off there. I want to look up how this business did. Bro, immediately following the episode, the Parkers chose to reject Damon John's $200,000 investment offer. <laughs> There's two things that happened. One is they were actually excited about it, and Damon was not fun to work with, which is very possible. Or they realized that the show always looks better when you get a deal. So you should take any deal and then just cancel it afterwards so that when they air it, it looks like you're, <laughs> you know, everyone's back slapping and it's happy and it's better marketing for your business. We knew that we wanted to do business with Damon. Yeah. He knows his stuff in that industry. And so Bro, are these people plants? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he fucking pay two actors to come in here and was everyone roasting him for not investing for five seasons? By August 2015, one year later, they had sold over four million. They're still operating as of December 2021, and they generate five million in revenue annually. So if he had just taken their offer and not been weird about it, he would have made absolutely insane racks. And I've brought in Ryan's Barkery, now known as Rise Ruffery. What a stupid fucking rebrand. I'm sorry, it's a child's dog food company. <laughs> But going from Ryan's Barkery to Rise Ruffery is not going to solve your problems. That's not, if, if you're having problems selling under Ryan's Barkery, 
The solution is not to go to rise. It doesn't. That's not better or worse. It's just stupid. My name is Michael Elliott, and my business is Hammer and Nails. Sharks, there are millions of guys like me who go to nail salons for manicures and pedicures. Oh, but we do so that it's sport clips. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I thought it was an actual because <laughs> I saw the sign and it said like nails for guys, and I thought it was like <laughs> I was like, are you trying to? brand hammer and nails to be more gendered is surprising to find out but i'm not uh the typical paragon of masculinity i've never done a manicure or a pedicure would i actually like it would it be any benefit I just cut my nails like it, it's pretty nice it makes you feel nice i'll take you to the nail salon for a video connery's pants that's a deal a truck and connery's pants get fucking pedicures <laughs> that's a fucking that's number one trending I'm gonna wear a bored ape t-shirt. Okay, actually, I just realized, oh, I totally forgot that I was busy. <laughs> What's your background? Well, I, look, when I was 16 years old, I was a kid in the system. So I saved up my money and I decided to publish the very first hip hop magazine on March 15th, 1988. I became the director of special projects for this magazine called The Source. What? Which was, at that point, the Rolling Stone of hip hop. The Source? I, I know you, I mean, you're a legend, I mean, Thank you. Yo, being in the source early, back in like the 80s, early 90s, that's like incredibly, it was incredibly influential. And decided to move to California. I decided I was gonna write movies of all things. My films to date have generated $118 million at the box office. I think most guys that I know, myself included, aren't like, I really wanna go to the nail salon, but I'm afraid I'll get laughed at. It's like, why do I want to go to the nail salon? I don't see this as like the solving the biggest problem, which is like you have to make it seem like something appealing and then make it something that's like a regular habit. Like haircuts are a regular habit for people and it's very noticeable if you don't get one after a month. There's much more money to be made franchising this business. No, get to the point where it is so profitable, the franchisees will pay whatever, as opposed to you're having to convince the franchisees, you're putting the cart before the horse and for those reasons, I'm out. Smart. I don't think you can charge a lot too. You can't have crazy margins. Like, you know, women's beauty stuff always has crazy inflated margins. I don't know. <laughs> they can always charge way more for the women's version than the men's version. Men are just way less willing to spend on average on this kind of thing. And so you can't even like, Get the crazy markups that a nail salon would have. I used to be a member of a place in New York called John Allen, a very yep. similar place. You go to someplace like a John Allen, they have fine suits, they have a, a bar. I don't see all of that here. I'm out. I look forward to the time when all of the sharks, with all due respect, kick themselves and go, oh my God, he did it. Okay, as of August, 2021, he now has 12 franchises plus the original store. Eight are in California, two in Texas, two in Ohio, one in Virginia. Annual revenue of all stores, 25 million. Sharks, how many times have you been at an airport and had your phone tragically die in your arms? Sharks, Amber is a mobile phone charging station that is completely free to use. Simply walk up, scan their fingerprint, choose one of the... This looks so fucking bad and annoying. If I find out this is super well, I will eat my words. Imagine if you're drunk at a bar, dude, and they're trying to fucking figure out the fingerprint thing and it doesn't read. Yeah, the the, the fingerprint thing is absolutely over-engineering. That, that is engineers trying to fucking <laughs> make it fancier than it needs to be. Today we but can there's also no way to patent this. I've seen like a million versions of this. I was in a Uniqlo shopping for clothes recently, and they had one of these. It was just a big... White box, you could put your phone in and charge, but it gave you a passcode. It was a lot easier. The idea of you walking up once, putting your finger in there, and it recognizing you and the door coming down is ludicrous. <laughs> we have a big security center. The fingerprint scanner that we pay for people to get into that center was well, well over 50,000. I've never seen Robert so passionate about something, but he is fucking, he's got experience here. Yeah, he literally knows his shit on this. This is absolutely, this seems ludicrous. It seems like a fucking college concept that's not a real business idea. They're gonna go three times. And then they're gonna pull it off the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, so the, and, and this is before they've had something to drink. <laughs> but. It's funny because there's no point in continuing this. After that from Robert, this whole thing is dead. And they know it and everyone knows it. What's, is it just turn around and leave. Right now we can make the unit for $1,000 with- Oh, $1,000? This is going to end so badly. <laughs> That is such Why does anybody really need this? I think there's so many personal charging devices oh and actually God. I'm in the space right now we're creating something that is light years ahead of us. I'm out. Damn, this is one of the most 
fucking brutal eviscerations that I've seen in Shark Tank. There's not a single shark who's like, hey, let's give him a shot. Or like, well, this could be better. Like from the beginning, everyone hated this instantly and they're all taking turns roasting it. There's only one answer to this. I have to hire you both so I can fire you. <laughs> this the, the guy on the left is not having it. This guy's at least trying to like, you know, smile it off. This guy is fucking having the worst day of his life. This is probably the engineer guy that added the fucking scanner. <laughs> I hate this so much, it's incredible. It's one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. I'm out. Someone said, imagine these two guys nervous before they walked out and the tall guy said, don't worry, they'll invest. <laughs> Someone in chat said, hey, don't worry about it. The worst they can say is no. <laughs> I know it works. We've tested it a million times. I mean, I would probably go rail Hershey back in the teeth. I mean, that's no. not... <laughs> about to fucking <laughs> murder Robert Herkovic. <laughs> I mean, that's wow. not. That's right. Do she want me to be honest? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this is a psycho. This guy's already wishing he never joined this group project in fucking Engineering 401. We are we at Amber are proud to announce our new partnership with at Drake and Co. on their Drake vs. Lil Wayne tour. And they got an OVO Amber here and it got three likes. Robert's remarks in the show effectively ended their prospects with the other sharks. But an even worse outcome was that it also made potential customers start to distrust their goods. <laughs> Robert fucking ended the business. It's long dead. It died, it died within a year. The result is the most thoughtfully designed and comfortable pair of socks you'll ever wear. We learned that socks are the number one most requested clothing item at homeless shelters. So for every pair of socks we sell, we donate a pair. You have to double your sales to give me the equivalent returns that I get from a company that's not doing the same thing. Or your sales. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, first of all, it's not even true because the cost of making a sock is really cheap. So you're, yeah, you're essentially doubling the cost, but you can still have a big margin. Plus, it's excellent marketing. An average margin is 54%. Including the giveaway? Bring the giveaway. You guys are still sock cockroaches. You're nowhere. You have no market share yet. You have no retail exposure. You could have said that to the I, guy I who think started if you Under can Armour raise, too. If you can raise... Yeah, this is a good response. They guys took it really well. Uh, he's obviously wrong. All right, I'm going to spoiler alert here. Uh, since we already know this going in, Bombas is massively successful. This product is the most successful product in Shark Tank history. It has now passed the Scrub Daddy. So everything Kevin says seems even dumber in hindsight. It's also weird because, yeah, what, what he said applies is to any small startup business and any field with competition. Now, it is true, a bigger competitor completely knock you off and you have no discernible brand, then yeah, you're going to get completely owned by, by a guy that has bigger scale. But they do have a unique brand and they do have a unique pitch and they have the charity angle and they have good design and they clearly know socks. So it's a little different. So word of mouth was our proof of concept, right? That is what okay, told so us. Okay, so what's the next? So the next step is we're taking this money and hiring people, the customer acquisition specialist, partnerships yeah, with that's globally not a good hotel for recognized me. That's brands. not a good answer for me. <laughs> I don't think you've done a good job of talking. What's funny is these answers are very calm, rational, and good. The guys don't seem panicked. They seem like they've thought of these questions, and the sharks are, like, uh, losing it about it. And I feel you should be doing everything to run everything that you can right now, the two of you. So I really don't like that strategy. Well, it's already big enough. They uh -huh. can't hire. That's crazy. Okay, they, they, they did that. They did it themselves to $450,000 in sales. What are you talking about? <laughs> what she says makes sense when you're at the, at the complete initial phase, but you have to hire. That's a really weird way to be out. I mean, you just don't want to be involved. You just don't believe in it. But bro, I need to hire and I'm a fucking streamer, <laughs> a one man streamer in my fucking off hours. They're making a fucking multi-million dollar sock business with, it's crazy to think they should all do it themselves. When? They're tilted off of Amber charging still. <laughs> Dude, they had so much fun roasting Amber Charging. They're just going after anyone, dude. You have a chance now to readjust your valuation before you hear from the last shark who happens to be in the fashion industry. Do you think you should do that, or are you going to go down with the... Boop, boop, beep. <laughs> I can't believe Kevin played so much into this bit with socks on his hands for the biggest product in Shark Tank history. So we, we came here today, obviously, with your background, wanting to strike a deal with you. We would probably be willing to go down to $200,000 at 10%. That gives you a $2 million valuation. That cuts our valuation in half, but we think you can bring a ton of value to this. That's a fucking sweetheart deal. For 10% is your counter. I was about to be out. 
but I like that valuation yeah, only it's an because amazing. it looks like you do want to get to work. I like that valuation because it looks like you do want to get to work. <laughs> what, dude? What? I fucking hate how David negotiates. He never looks at him in the eye. He's always like doing a big showy act. Like, what are you doing? I'll tell you what. I'll try to meet you somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna finance the inventory. Two hundred thousand dollars for seventeen and a half percent. Can we uh, can we take a moment and call our CFO? Uh, no. <laughs> You have a deal. We'll take oh! it. Holy shit! I cannot believe that. For a man that we have clowned every single episode for being out of every single product, he finally hits one and it goes out of the fucking park. The company exceeded $100 million in revenue in 2018. And Damon has, what, 17.5%? You know what? Uh, tonight, I still will roast Damon, I'm sure, again. <laughs> but for tonight, he's the MVP. For the night, everyone else looks like chumps. <laughs>